Chief, want well, to thank you for being here. If you want to introduce your companion, uh, and then you can make any statement that you feel like you need to make. Uh, yeah, and this introduction is part of my pre-organized uh, presentation, so if I can just continue with that, I'll let you know who this is. Okay. She's not a mystery lady. She's been with us a while. Been with Metro a while. But uh, my name is Rick White, Director Chief of the Nashville Fire Department. With me this afternoon to my right, I have Miss Leanne Birchell. Uh, in the audience, I have several members of our command staff. We have uh, Deputy Director of Operations, Tim Henderson. Can you guys hear me? I have trouble with microphones, or they have trouble with me. Uh, we also have uh, Commander Will Swan, who you've already uh, heard. Uh, Commander Lenny Manning, he's the uh, Commander of Fire Suppression Operations. Commander Robbie McAllister, the Commander of EMS Operations. And, uh, you know, I guess any others out there that I'm not aware of, but I don't think there are. Uh, this staff has been, is, has been, and is instrumental in the day-to-day -day operations of the Nashville Fire Department. Uh, Chairman uh, Pardue, is that, is that the correct designation, or is it President Pro, Pro Tem, or what? I'm losing my uh, civic You just told me Big Dookie, if you <laughs> what gets my attention. Well, I think we may be kin to each other. Uh, anyway, uh, Chairman John Cooper, uh, Chairman of the Budget and Finance Commander, uh, Committee and uh, members of the council, thank you for this opportunity to discuss the mayor's recommended budget for FY18 for the Nashville Fire Department. It's my privilege to represent the fire department. I've been on 40, going on 41 years, and I've seen a lot of changes, most of them positive within my time on this department. Most all of them have been uh, intent with keeping our folks safer and providing better services, property saving, life loss, you know, emergency medical care, and everything else involved. So we've seen a lot of changes, and I, don't, I won't be here another 40 years, I promise you that, but I'll uh, probably see some more changes before I get out of here. I hope I do. Uh, I'd like to thank the 1,211 members of the department. These are the men and women, whether they're in field operations, support operations, what have you, that have dedicated their uh, their professional career to help in this city. And when you look at a firefighter, when you look at someone in EMS, a paramedic or EMT, I think the first uh, characteristics that you, characteristic that you'll pick up on is the, uh, is the type of person that you get that's basically wanting to help other people. And that's what we exist for. We exist to help people. We exist to save their property in case of an unwanted fire. We exist uh, to help them when they've been not involved in a car wreck or had a stroke or an MI or something like that. And we wouldn't be here if we didn't like doing that. Sometimes the job's not that pleasant, but it's a job that has to be done. So I want to thank all those guys who are not uh, guys and girls who are not uh, here with us tonight for the excellent, professional, and brave job they do every day. It's not always easy, but working together, you know, once I said, the fire department team gets it done. <laughs> During the current fiscal year, the Nashville Fire Department achieved many great things. Uh, we be began implementing recommendations from the Deloitte Staffing Study, who is a workforce assessment, by generating a new fire recruit eligibility list and hired 36 new fire recruits on May 16th, which is the first recruit class we've had since January of 2013. Long time. Implemented two additional ambulances, partially funded through the FY17 budget, which brings us to 28 ambulances in service 24-7, 365. As of April 30th, EMS billing, the EMS Billing Division has collected $11.7 million, which is on target. This is a revenue stream, which is on target to exceed budget collections by $1 million by the end of this fiscal year. We're pleased to inform you that for the fourth year in a row, the fire department will finish the fiscal year within budget. In Nashville, one out of three fires are arson related. The arson division increased the case closure with an arrest rate of 36 cent, which is three times the Nash higher than the national average. So we really have to applaud these guys because people who perform ar arson uh, don't need to be around. 
in general public. Let me put it that way. I'm not saying knock them off. Uh, in fiscal year 2016, calls increased 15% to 110,884, and EMS transports increased 10% to 67,345. As of April 30th, we responded to 98,214 calls with 58,251 medical transports for the fiscal year, which will result in another year record, uh, another year of record-breaking growth in calls. The continued increase in calls, transports, and requests for services is evident in the fire department FY18 budget request. We focused on safety, growth, and growth in the fire suppression EMS and fire marshal's office to meet the increasing emergency service needs of this city. Our vision for this fire department, my vision for this fire department, is to provide a quality public safety service in an ex expedient manager, uh, manner to citizens and visitors of Nashville. As a uh, constituent once told uh, one of my predecessors, all citizens want are good help fast. And we can have all kinds of lofty mission statements and everything, but when you get right down to it, that's what people want. They want good help and they want them to get there in a timely fashion. Mayor Sperry recommended budget for fiscal year 18 included 1.9 million in improvements for the fire department. Some of those improvements uh, specified as $962,400 to continue the two medic units uh, established in FY17. Uh, $262,600 to fund three additional fire inspectors, $600,000 to partially fund 11 fire recruits. In, su in summary, the Nashville Fire Department has enjoyed a successful year of accomplishment and progress, and we can't stop now. We realize our responsibility as a department is to utilize, the, utilize our existing resources in a way that maximizes their efficiency. We continue to be diligent with the current resources and will continue to allocate those resources to the most present needs. At this time, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to turn this program back to you and, and the council for questions and comments. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Councilman Glover. Thank you, Chair. Chief, let me, let's walk back through some numbers. Let me try to understand uh, where we are. All right, so you said you've recruited 36 that'll begin the training? They've already, they began training earlier this week on the 16th. So does one assume 25 of those are replacements and the 11 are the additionals that, you, that you're asking for? No, 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 no. Those okay. 11, those 11, uh, additional 11 will be represented in another class, which we hope to start sometime the 1st of January. Okay, so the 36 are replacing, as I was reading through your report, the, the aging staff right. that, that are moving on, right. et, et cetera. Okay. And in looking at your numbers, it looks like that you, you've been given an increase of 0 0.009, not even quite 9%, not, a, not even 1%. Yet the population has grown, as you pointed out to us in your study, 14 percent since 2001. What one of the things that we used to ask in these in these uh, budget hearings, and I haven't heard it too much, is, you know, can you can you make? Well, I don't want to say can you make it work because you always make it work, but uh, the the budget that was given to you in the mayor's uh, budget, uh, what is lacking? I don't. I don't want to say. Can you make it work? Because you, you will make it work. I get that. But what? What? Give me the key things that are lacking, please, sir. I, I think the biggest issue that's lacking is going to be the need for more firefighters. And uh, I've already talked with COO uh, Mr. Reblin about this, and you know we've agreed to sit down with the mayor after the first of July, and maybe getting ahead of the curve for the next budget presentation. And I think that's the uh, pragmatic way, way to go about this. Perhaps I haven't been as eloquent or uh, as steady as I need to be in really saying what the, uh, what the needs of the department are and why we need them. I guess sometimes because I just think like a firefighter my whole life, I think everybody else is going to do that. And I know better than that. And that's a shortcoming on my part. But we're, uh, we're in agreement. We're going to work together on this and, and get some better things coming down the road. Okay, and where are we? Let's switch uh, gears for just a second to the capital. Uh, I know we've had numerous conversations about capital uh, spending plans uh, on what you guys are looking to do. I know specifically uh, with um, the, the Donaldson Hermitage area, you were looking at uh, a new fire station or a couple of new fire stations, actually. Right. Where Where are we in that in in that 
Well, there's, uh, you know, Capital's only one issue of establishing a brand new station, one additional than what you already have. Uh, with that one station, uh, there has to be firefighters to go with it. The Capitol is going to be the building proper as well as a heavy piece of equipment to go in there. But to staff it adequately, uh, you're going to have to have five people per each shift times three, 15 people assigned to that, three captains, three engineers, and uh, nine firefighters. And so, I mean, where, where are we with regards to... Uh, building the additional sites, uh, specifically the, I know, I know you're looking at the one that was at Lebanon Road and Old Hickory Boulevard and, and maybe coming out uh, a little closer to my district specifically. Right, right. Yeah, we, we'd wanted one to uh, put in the, uh, uh, you know, Priest Lake area, you know, pretty close to you. And then another one in uh, Councilman uh, Bedney's district out in Antioch because they're, they're just like, you know, Hermitage and, and your area over there, they're uh, experiencing exponential growth. And, and what happens to that is your response times get lengthened. And it's because, you know, you don't have some place closer to the new population, but also the next closest one may be out on another call. So it's, uh, it's, it's quite a web, let me put it that way. And so what, what has occurred with your response times uh, over the last couple of years? Um, have they been increasing? Uh, what, what, what's occurring there? I think uh, Ms. Virchel's got the, uh, the numbers on that. Is that correct? Uh, ba basically, uh, I'll have to get back with you with the specifics, but they're going up now. It seems like response times with our medic units, our ambulances, EMS units, uh, they're, they're decreasing, which is a good thing, obviously. We'd like to see them all decrease. Well, with the addition of the, the couple of new engines, hopefully that, that, that helped in, in that arena. Right. So uh, the, and I'll go back in and, and really look at the, at the capital, uh, but with regards to uh, adding the additional stations, uh, if, if you had your wish list, um, and I think we were looking at one more station, replacing one basically, and then adding another one, out in the uh, Hermitage Old Hickory area. Yeah. Uh, am I remembering that correctly? Yes, you remember that uh, very correctly. And like I said, an additional one in, uh, uh, in the Antioch area, uh, you know, positioning to be determined. But uh, also uh, an additional company request is a additional aerial device, aerial truck to our fleet. And we placed that out in the Madison area at uh, Station 38. Okay. So, so I can kind of understand if we got, uh, and, and I think the public safety issue, the educational issue, I mean, if, if that's truly our priorities, that's where we need to place our priorities first before we worry about frou-frou things, in my right. opinion. Um, so, point in case, there was a house right across the street from Ruby Major Elementary that by the time you guys got there, it was, and it's because you're so far away, sure. uh, by the time you got there, it was, it was over. Um, by having that additional uh, facility, and I, I don't want to name the location because I, I think it was still kind of up in the air, but it, it would be much closer. What does that do to response times for people for, for people that are in my district in the Antioch that are in the outlying areas? What, what does that do to the response time and uh, hopefully uh, to insurance rates and, and other things of that nature? And if you don't know the exact answer, that's fine. If you can get it, uh, I would appreciate that. Well, uh Insurance services uh, organization, they're the ones that, you know, a for-profit company that uh, have uh, people from the insurance industry uh, subscribe to them, and they basically establish insurance rates, homeowners rates, for a, a given locale. Uh, one of the big things with them is, uh, you know, being within uh, four road miles of a fire station. And as you get farther out, the ratings dr uh, drop and drop. Also, uh, you know, water supply is a big one. We can have all the firefighters and engines out there, but if we can't pull some water out of a water main, we're not going to do much good. But uh, those are the two basic components there. And I, I tell you what, for years I've tried to crack this nut to find out, well, how much can you actually save? 
and I haven't figured it out yet. I've read some real good papers on it, but it's really a nebulous situation. Subscribers can take the report in total. They can cherry pick. I mean, it's just a, you know, it's kind of a witch's brew of how these things are applied. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councilman. Council Lady Murphy. Thank you, Chairman. Um, did I hear correctly, uh, Chief White, that you said it takes 15 firefighters to staff a fire hall? That's for one piece of equipment. Oh, that's for one piece of equipment. So how many, um, like per fire hall, how many pieces of equipment do we typically have? Well, the uh, the two new ones we're talking about, we, we had planned on having a, an engine company as well as a medic company. And that would amount to staffing of 23 total. Okay, so I hope that uh, Councilman Glover's doing math for me over there. If that's 23-ish. How many fire halls do we have in Nashville now? We've got 39 stations. So that is how many, Glover? So if we're guessing 23 per fire hall. That's, now you, you have to re remember the, the EMS division has a different Separate. shift. Okay, what I'm getting at is do we have that many per fire hall now? No. How short would you guess us to be? God, have you got those numbers? Yeah, well, we, well we're re redoing our staffing matrix. I'm, I, I'll get you an exact number. Okay. I'm thinking we're looking at about 73 people. 73, because you were gracious enough. Um, some of y'all may know that in the personnel committee, we've had a couple of the department heads come before us um, and present us with their staffing levels uh, currently five years, 10 and 15 years ago. And um, I think that your, your chart was pretty, um, shocking to a lot of us as was planning and some of the other departments and so um, please fellow council members ask the personnel mm -hmm. committee about those questions um, because I wanted to see if you've yeah. gotten how many did you request in this budget cycle this budget I think we requested was it 53 it, it was kind of split up into various uh, different areas of operation I'll get you that exact number but as far as uh, ultimately getting to the goal of uh, of having you know everything fully staffed uh, we were looking at a, a an additional 35 firefighters per year over the next three years phasing them in okay and another council member has asked me to ask a little bit more about the pipe and drum guard and their uniforms and what um, the I'm seeing 25,000 funding to support costs as uniforms cleaning law enforcement supplies and other miscellaneous expenses is any of that going to the pipe and drum guard no ma'am not presently okay um, I think that covers it. If you'll get us the, the personnel information so I All can right. get it back uh, to my committee, I'll we'd appreciate it. I'll get that to you tomorrow. Thank you. Council Lady Gilmore. Thank you, um, Chair um, Dookie Pardue. All right, appreciate you. Big Chair, big yeah. Dookie Pardue. Yeah, a little Dookie yeah. in the fire department. Yes, yes. Um, uh, Chief White, we appreciate you being here. I had a couple of questions about the equipment uh, and some of the aging equipment that's located at the fire hall on Clarksville Highway. They said they put in a couple of requests and they really need some of that equipment. That, that would be Station 24 on okay. Clarksville Highway. Yeah. And I don't know the pecking order of who's getting new engines. I do believe we do have, what, a total of 10 coming in in the next few weeks. And they've We've just shared, okay, in. things from like ladders I'll, I'll, and rope and things like that as I, well. I will, uh, well, I'll, I'll get that information to you as well. It's what, what, what place they are in the line. Okay, because they said they've been requesting for a while and they really feel like it's impacting their job. And then the second piece too, I was hoping that you could explain to me um, how the calls work for different fire engines. So in other words, if... Like, do they fill in for others? And sometimes it impacts their ability to answer other calls that are within their circumference. So in other words, maybe they may fill in for, go to Donaldson and fill in if there's a closer one. Just could you are, kind are of Are you walk? talking about 
uh, a whole company backing up another station. I am. If you could explain okay. to me that process. And yeah, we've, we've worked together with the ECC, and what we have is what they call MUM. It's a move-up module, and it's just been carefully calculated and planned. And uh, like a lot of plans, you know, when you really have a busy day or something, everything doesn't happen like you want to. But what we try to do is when we pull a company to fill in for another one, it's pull one from an area that's got a lot of protection around it, so that company won't be as missed as if we pulled one from a company, let's say Engine 30 in Jolton. If we pull them to back up, then you don't have anything in Jolton, and they're kind of landlocked. It's not the easiest place to get to. So, you know, we do put some precision in there as much as we can. But then again, you know, uh, sometimes the, the calls, uh, the nature of the calls, they, they drive it as well. Okay. And so maybe I can meet with you one-on-one -on -one about that, because it's my understanding that some of the calls that are in that area, some of the houses may have burned a little bit quicker had they not been gone to fill in for another Okay. Well, i tell you company. What, you, what you really need to do is get me the fireman to speak to you this information. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think them. it's about that. I just think as a council person, they're just sharing the information. And I, if it's, I you know, Yeah, and I, if it's, I, if it's I, not I'm any in truth Jeff. to it. I'm yeah. speaking in Jeff. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then if it's not, like I said, it's not, but if it is, we can look at it to provide good services. And I, j I just know that from when I was dealing with... Um, I know in Germantown there was some concerns when the fire hall was getting ready to be moved, and it was some real, real things to that, right. you know, and, right. and people's insurances and things are impacted by that. So they're just sharing like anybody else would. So um, I look forward to getting that list about the equipment that you said you were going to share okay. about the fire yeah, hall. Yeah, and you need to know the status of uh, engine 24 relative to when they get a new engine. Yep, and then Got just it. maybe which ones that you say that they fill in for, and if it is okay, I'll check on the move up module. Yeah, you know, I give them. A, I I was joking you about getting their firemen's names. I'm not a very punitive person anyway, but I I will go out there and talk with the guys. Hear their you know, hear the concern. Yeah, and I think it's some truth to, uh, you know, I don't know if it's some truth. I mean, I just think you have to look into it. Like I said, when I represented the 19th district, there was concerns shared, and it was some truth to some of it, and sure. some of it it wasn't. So I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Council, uh, Council Lady. Council Lady Hurt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Chief. Yes, ma'am. I have a few questions. The um, 36 training, uh, recruits that you have. Yes, I'm, I'm concerned about uh, women and um, people of color and, and the diversity that you have within the department. Can you speak to that on, on all the level, levels, entry level, captains, department heads, so forth and so on? I will have to get you exact numbers on that. I can't call them off the top of my head. I believe this last class, it was either 61 or 69% were diverse populations, not including Caucasian. So uh, it's one of the most diverse recruit classes we've ever hired. And, uh, you know, this is something because I do know that we don't meet the, uh, the national standards and all that on that. Well, we're going to have to do some increases on the lower end to make sure that carrying on those increases show true throughout the ranks. And I think if you look at the uh, this fire department's track record with promoting minorities, uh, I'll stand by that record against anybody. I'm happy to do it. I know I'm married to one. Councilman Glover. I just wanna, I was, I was running some numbers while everybody was talking. If I look, in the public safety arena and, and some of the increases that have taken place with some of the other departments over the last couple of years. If, if I did a comparison and if I looked at, and Leanne, I'm going to give you numbers and if you don't mind after uh, you take a look at it, if you guys would, would get back with us and, and let me know if we're kind of on track here. Um, if we were treating everybody equally in, in the public safety arena, it looks like that we, we would owe you about 43 staff members is, is what it looks like to me, or 32 on top of the 11 that you've, that, that is in the budget for this year. Right. I'm showing that the FTE cost is somewhere around 54,545 uh, is what it looks like. I may, I'm, I'm, I'm probably close if I'm not 
if I'm not on it, but I think we're pretty close. So I think if we if we equalized as best we could and we, we were able to, to, to look in the next budget, I'm not saying we can do it necessarily this time, right. but if we kind of keep our eye on the ball and look at 32 additional staff members, what would that do? Does that allow you to open up the, the, the uh, additional stations? I think you're looking at a cost about 1.745 million. Um, and then uh, it, depending on, again, the, the, the number of pieces of equipment you've got, then it looks like that would give you probably an additional, <laughs> sadly, only two, uh, two more stations right. is, is, is all it would really do. Uh, and so um, I, I think as we continue to look, as the city continues to grow as it is, and I mean, I, I think it's very easy. I, I think I could look at almost anybody in the outlying sections of the county and the explosion that's occurring there in, in the growth of, of houses and, and the amount of building, and, and are we able to keep up with that? And the answer, I think, would be simply no. Uh, and and I've, I've said this a couple of times, I don't think we're reinvesting back necessarily where we need to be reinvesting uh, in, in, in the city. So um, if my numbers are somewhat correct. If you could just let us know, and then right. I would I would enjoy uh, uh, continuing the dialogue as we go forward sure. to talk about to talk about how we do this, and then working with the administration, hopefully, and uh, Councilman Cooper and the and the chair of the Budget and Finance Committee to say, you know, this is a priority. This is something that we need to look at because we're certainly not. While, while your representation is decreasing on a per capita basis, the, the, the population certainly is not decreasing. And so uh, I hope we can look at that and, and, and get serious about how we uh, focus in and how we hopefully will help your department uh, grow with the, with the growth rate of the city. Well, you know, in preparation for this over the last several months, I've been, uh, I was always real big on statistics and uh, I was trying to put a per capita number on um, firefighters per, you know, X number of population. And I actually read through some stuff in 2010 that's not been updated since then. But, uh, you know, we were like number nine in the nation in 2010 as far as our firefighters per capita, whether it was 1,000 or 7,000. I just did the simple math and it came out with a real oddball number. But uh, we were ninth then. I'm, I'm still trying to check on that now. And uh, I think we've dropped a little bit. I don't know how far we've dropped. And did I also read in the Deloitte uh, report that we're basically at the minimum on what, it, what, what the uh, uh, state or the, the national fire uh, st uh, standards are? It, it, we're, right. we're basically, we're, 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 at the, we're at the minimum level. Is, yes. that, is that correct? Yes, we are. And it, it more concerns me in the 30 series of companies, the ones on the periphery of the county, than it does the inner city companies because they have quicker help they have help coming quicker okay thank you chair thank you councilman glover chief i've just got mostly an observation um, and like you i'm not a real eloquent speaker so if i make somebody mad i, I thought i, I was uh, i hope you get over <laughs> uh you know i've been doing this since 2011. fire department's been suffering for employees since way before that. We've begged for them, we've, we've put in supplements for them. Everybody wants to get together and, and talk about it and we're gonna make it right. Well, that's five years, six years ago. I'm sorry, but it's it's time to do something for the fire department. Their, uh, their employees have been way down, like I said, forever. Uh, they got equipment that uh, Sometimes don't make it to a scene. I have to call a record or tow a damn fire truck. I'm just asking y'all if you if you will please if you think about trying to help these guys. Uh, thank you, and Chief, we thank you for your time. All right, I would like to say one thing though. We're very serious now. The mayor's office is very serious on working through this problem together. And uh, while our numbers in firefighters are down, the numbers as a total department aren't down very much because we picked up these additional medic units. When this new management team came up on the second floor at headquarters, we had 19 static engine, I mean, uh, ambulances, 24-7, 365. We got 28 today. The driving force there was the Maxima study that indicated you got to do something about EMS, and now uh, fire suppression has to catch up. Thank you, sir. Y'all have a good evening.